Hello, I'm Tyler Garner, a senior software developer at Noblis NSP. And I'm Cyrus Misagi, tech lead on the Rogue project. And we're going to demonstrate some of the capabilities that we've added to GeoShape uh, for the International Association of Firefighters into an application that they call Street Cred. So uh, here you can see the Street Cred website, and this is a GeoShape instance that has been templated specifically for uh, the International Association of Firefighters. Uh, immediately when you log into Street Cred, you can see some of the layers that we've uploaded, which we'll go into detail uh, in a little while uh, when we go into Maploom. Uh, you can also on the right see some of the maps that we've created for the International Association of Firefighters, including some of these layers. So we'll jump right into Maploom where a majority of the work that we've done for this project has taken place. So uh, in Maploom, you can add layers to the map by clicking on this plus button, uh, which will bring up all the layers on the local server. If we type in IAFF underscore repo, we can see a majority of the layers that we've added for the IFF project. You can add the layer to the map simply by clicking the checkbox on the left of the layer. And you can actually go back and we can actually bring a different imagery layer as well. So, um, for example, if you go here and you can bring in imagery from Bing, um, let's say we bring the aerial with labels, um, and then we can move it down in the list to be below the other layers we, uh, layers we brought in. Um, and But we can hide it for now, that way it's a little bit easier to see. Okay. And I'm going to start by disabling a majority of the layers by clicking on the eyeball on the right of each layer. Uh, so each layer here has several buttons once you click on the layer name. Uh, the first button is a zoom to data, so that will zoom to the extent of all the data within the layer. This data set is the ISO commercial properties. So uh, this data set is maintained by an organization that sets uh, insurance standards and, uh, and, and identifies risk for structures based on various uh, attributes. And so we were able to load some of this data for Arlington into GeoShape. And then when I click on a feature here, you can see those attributes that they use. So, uh, for example, you can see the address of the structure. You can see the needed fire flow and I assume that's in gallons per minute, uh, the stories for the structure, the construction class, the number of basements, uh, a common name description of the structure. So you can see this is a church. You can see the number of occupants, the floor area, and then the uh, occupational classes. Uh, and finally, it, there's a bullion, a bullion for whether or not there are hazards in this, uh, in this structure. And so uh, all these features are colorized based on the ISO colorization scheme. So, uh, and that's based on the, the needed fire flow uh, attribute. So uh, at the top right here, you can see in the legend that red features are 400 or 4,000 plus gallons per minute, uh, 3,000 to 3,999 gallons per minute are orange, green are 1,000 to 3,000 essentially, blue are 0 to 1,000, and then the black features are uh, unknown or, or no fire flow listed. Uh, next we can also view the features in a table view. So this is a, a way that you can actually see all of the uh, features in almost an Excel like uh, a table view. So uh, you can kind of quickly go through and get a sense of what type of features this data set holds. So we can see uh, you know, there's some with the occupational class one, some two, some three, a lot of fives it seems like, a lot of sixes. Um, and, and just quickly visualize it. We've also, for this project specifically, added the ability, ability to filter these out. So uh, say I only want to see the structures that have a fire flow greater than, or that uh, have a fire flow required greater than 2,000 gallons per minute. I can type in 2000 there, hit apply, and this will reduce the data set down to only those features. Uh, and here at the bottom, you can see the total feature count has been reduced to simply 93. Uh, and now say I want to see all of those within uh, my zip code. So say I live in 22001, or that's the district that um, 
that I typically run in. Uh, I can further reduce this data set to just those features. So here you see all the ones that have a needed fire flow of greater than 2,000 uh, gallons per minute and are within 22201. And you can see that the data set has been further reduced to only 20 features. Uh, we can then show a heat map of all this data. So this is just the filter data. So this is just those features. Again, 2,000 uh, gallons per minute or more. Uh, and within the 22201 zip code, here's a heat map of those features. Uh, and, and obviously that data can get as, um, or these filters can get as complex as you want on any of the features. So you can continue at reducing your data set down. Uh, you can look at the number of basements or whatever the data set has. You can manipulate it in a way that you only get the features that you're interested in. Uh, another functionality we added was the ability to get some summary statistics on this data. So let's again take the needed fire flow and run the summary statistics by clicking the view statistics button here in the bottom left. Uh, you can see that I cleared the filter so I, I'm viewing all 482 of my features again and when I click on the view statistics this is going to show me the number of unique values in this uh, column and then the count of records that have that value okay so uh, the number of records that have zero as the needed fire flow is here what, lo what looks like about 80 records uh, the number of records that have a needed fire flow of 500 is about 55 uh, and for numeric data on the right, we have some uh, summary statistics, including the mean, the median, the maximum, the sum, the range, the standard deviation, the variance, the count, uh, the populated count, and the unique values. So the unique values is essentially how many uh, columns you have here. The populated count is uh, how many column or how many rows actually have data in this column. Uh, the full count is just the total number of records, uh, and the rest of these summary statistics are just your standard uh, statistics. You can also view this data as a pie chart if you want to get a sense of how each row represents the entire data set or what population of the entire data set uh, each column represents. So here you can see that um, a majority of it is a 1750 needed fire flow, or not a majority, but a significant uh, chunk of the of the data set. Uh, and the summary statistics work on the unfiltered and the filtered data set. So if we filter this data set down again to the um, 22201 records, uh, that data set would only run on, on those records, or excuse me, the summary statistics would only run on those records. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, so let's actually go ahead and look at some more basic functionality too. So we're looking on the map and we have a lot of uh, point features. Uh, if we click on any given uh, feature, um, you could see that the information comes up and uh, we can actually edit uh, what a specific feature shows on the map. So we can either change the attributes, the values associated with it. Um, essentially what uh, this form comes up, uh, it, uh, any layer that gets uploaded and added to the map it basically just puts a form together, so it's a very generic approach, and you can make your modifications here. It can handle date and time, and bring uh, date time pickers, and uh, depending on what kind of feature it is. So this now, we're showing how you can actually move the geometry. Let's say there's a fire hydrant, but somebody goes there and they know that that is not in the right place, uh, location for that matter. It can be edited uh, right here in the uh, UI. Um, I mean, we do support um, all kinds of different layers, point line, polygons, multi, you know, geometry, etc. Um, but the idea is that some one other, uh, if, you know, one of the more other noticeable features we have it's this uh, ability to view history. Let's, let's look at the history of this particular feature. So it you could see that in 1022, uh, user anonymous uh, had uploaded this. Um, and, um, and then we had actually here then on um, Garner TV at, uh, on 1030 uh, made an edit to it at uh, 826 then again at 827 it was changed so let's go ahead and see what was changed on 826 um, we can view it on the map or we can just actually bring up this diff uh, essentially this difference viewing window and you could see that um, the field that's uh, green now it, it's indicating that there wasn't a value there and now there is a value 
and if we um, we can click on show authors to see out of all the values we're looking at which one was brought in by which user so uh, the particular one and when we scroll down you could see that uh, Gardner TB had entered that and over you know over the years you might essentially end up with a feature that many people have contributed values to so um, all right so next uh, let's go ahead and look at um, what we have um, so we looked at the features we like to so yeah the notifications here um, show what changes were made to the map so um, uh, essentially you could see that this particular one says that which layer was edited and you could either view it on the map uh, or again bring up the differences there um, okay so do you want to talk about any other layers by any chance Okay, another data set that we pulled in was the fire hydrant data set, and this was pulled in from the Arlington County uh, GIS website. Um, this is all the hydrants in the, in the county, and it's colorized based on the hydrant color attribute, which is blue. Uh, it's literally just the color of the, of the hydrant, it seems like, uh, which may or may not correspond to the, uh, to the pressure of the hydrant. Uh, for Arlington, I'm not sure, but uh, we pulled in that data just to add some contextual information that may be helpful to the uh, Arlington County Fire Department or the International Association of Firefighters. Um, and here you can see that this is, I, I find it particularly useful once you add the uh, imagery on here as well. So you can see uh, for various structures where the closest hydrants are to the structures and whatnot. Um, okay. And again, all these data sets, we can do those table views. So we could filter the hydrants by uh, the, the latest test pressures or the static pressure, uh, the, the color, the, the location of the hydrant, and whatnot. We also loaded the fire stations. These are just a point attribute of the location of the fire stations in Arlington. The fire response boxes we added as well. And all these you can click on and get the attribute information that we know about the uh, the features. Uh, we loaded some Arlington inspection data and this was given to us from the Arlington County Fire Department. Uh, it's colorized based on uh, the type of, of inspection and then whether or not there was a violation. So green inspections are a permit inspection with no violations, red features are permit violations or excuse me permit inspections with a violation uh, the darker green features are annual inspections with no violations and then the orange features are annual inspections with violations and then finally the black features are uh, hoarding inspections uh, next we also loaded in uh, Arlington County response information so these are uh, Arlington County fire incidents and then uh, colorized based on the the type fire or EMS um, we also added high-rise information so this was also given to us from the County Fire Department but this shows you where all the high-rises are in the county uh, and it's colorized based on the number of stories so less than seven are blue seven to ten are green uh, ten to fifteen are yellow 15 to 22 are orange and greater than 22 stories are red. Uh, again, you can click on each feature and see the height of it, the structure and then the number of stories and the address. Uh, and so all these layers can also, you can run heat map analysis just by clicking the heat map button on the layer. There you can see out of the entire data set where most uh, most of the heat map, or excuse me, most of the high rises are clustered. And for example, you could run a search that say, let's look for high rises that were built be, uh, before a certain date and have uh, you know more than say seven stories or so. Um, yeah. Uh, and one last data set that we added, or excuse me, we also added uh, an imports data set. So this is proprietary data that. Uh, that also has high rises and uh, this data was obtained by the International Association of Firefighters um, but it also shows you high rise information so you can compare this to the Arlington County high rise data set uh, if you wanted to uh, and I guess the valuable thing is each one of these data sets has information that the other data sets don't have so 
you can look at the Arlington County one and compare it to this data set uh, and compare the sum of those to the ISO commercial properties data set and take uh, little pieces of each one of these to, to construct a data set that has a lot of information in it uh, that could potentially be useful to uh, either firefighters or decision makers. Uh, and one final data set we loaded was uh, power outages. So one of the requests was to see if we could get real-time power outages loaded into the system. Uh, and we were able to do that. So let's see. So uh, this data set is a real-time power outages. We're updating it every 30 minutes. Uh, the features are symbolized using graduated symbols. So the more customers that are out of service, the larger the feature is. So you can see here, and it looks like Henrico County, uh, there is 74 customers out of service for a single power outage. Uh, it also shows the expected date and time that the power will be returned to service. So you can see around 4 o'clock um, today is the minimum return to service and then uh, 6 o'clock is the maximum return to service. And, uh, and you get that for each one of these features. And the cool thing about this is even though it's live data, you can still uh, run all these analyses on it and filter it out, right? So I can see all the one, all the power outages that are above 60, or excuse me, that are above 60 customers out that affect above 60 customers, then there's only two. Um, we can actually run the statistics now to get a, uh, each feature doesn't say uh, each feature doesn't represent, since it doesn't represent a single customer, uh, if we want to see how many customers are actually affected, we can basically clear our filter. And then uh, that way we have all the features, then we can uh, click customer out. And now when we run the statistic, uh, the sum uh, essentially uh, 158, 158 uh, customers are currently out of um, without power. So. Yeah. And so here you can see, while this graph doesn't look that helpful, it's showing you that there are... Um, there's one instance of a power outage with one customer out. There's one instance of a power outage with three customers out, uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So um, I think that's, uh, do you have anything else you want to add, Todd? No. Um, one thing I think is, is probably interesting to do with this data, though, is to kind of look at them in relationship to one another. So uh, even though each data set is kind of helpful on its own, when you start looking at the multiple ones together, they can become um, a little bit more helpful, right? So here I have the inspection information and the incident information. Um, and I'm not too familiar with some of these data sets, but uh, you can start looking at kind of the relationships between inspections and um, fire incidents. Here you see a lot of inspections, but not that many fire incidents. Um, but that's really where this system can start letting you kind of interact with your information and your data to, um, to get some more knowledge out of it and to actually start uh, seeing if you can derive any conclusions from your, your information. And to add to that, uh, we can actually uh, make custom processes uh, depending on what the data is and what the use is uh, to basically bake in certain analysis that by pressing a single button uh, you view um, an analysis that's a particular thing that's important to your uh, users and we can integrate that into the map here. Uh, similarly, um, you know, you see a site now where there are many, ma many layers, many maps. You can download, upload, create users, create, do a lot of things in this portal. But creating a simplified version of it, um, that way it makes, making, uh, it makes it a lot easier for users if the use case is a very particular things. Uh, those are actually part, uh, things we can do as well. Make a very simple uh, portal that only exposes a subset of what you see here and maybe even look different and be uh, laid out to be um, more convenient as well. So. Okay. So yeah, well, that, that's it. Thank for you us. for listening. Yep. And if you have any information, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free, uh, feel free to go to www.geoshape.org and feel free to contact any of us. Thank you very much.